It's a great pleasure to be here um, with a group full of people to discuss Brazil. I've, I've found that those working with, with the country are very passionate um, about Brazil. And it's funny, I, I kind of fell into Brazil in an odd way. Uh, my background, my father is Portuguese and my mother is Mexican. And somehow that drew me to Western Hemisphere and then fell into Brazil. And I must admit for the last 10 years that I've been working with the country, it's, it's been an incredible experience. And so I'm very pleased to be here to, to discuss some of the market opportunities that exist and some of the challenges that do come with doing work out of Brazil. Um, I want to start by discussing a little bit um, of the overview of Brazil. I won't get into too much of the macroeconomic indicators because I think our previous panel did a phenomenal job of explaining kind of where Brazil is right now. Um, but it's, it's important to note that, again, Brazil is an important partner in the hemisphere with the United States. And this partnership has been growing through, through recent years. Um, as discussed previously uh, under the Bush administration and now with Obama's administration, we have had an incredible uh, amount of um, business opportunities that have grown from this uh, trade relationship that continues to become stronger. Um, these economic indicators that we have listed are a true indicator of how we've seen Brazil expand in the most recent years. They've really become a country of the present. Brazil was always mentioned in previous years of the potential. That was how it was discussed. Brazil one day could, could reach that potential, but we're really starting to see that now. Um, yes, of course, we can't deny the financial crisis that has hit everyone. It's a, it's a global crisis. Um, but Brazil has really fared well through this. The storm has, uh, has shown that Brazil is finally at the point where their, uh, their economic indicators have, have been able to stabilize. Um, I think it's important to note that at the G20 meeting last week, um, it, it's, again, this partnership that has expanded. President Lula was one of the, the presidents who announced that he would also be contributing to the IMF. And the fact that Brazil, for the first time, is able to give money to the IMF is an incredible indicator of, of how far we've come. And President Lula himself um, thought it was quite ironic that in the 80s he was there protesting in Brazil and holding up the posters to get IMF out, and uh, I think uh, it's really telling how far um, the country has really improved. Our bilateral trade with, with Brazil has been incredible. We have over $63 billion of trade that goes both ways. Um, here you could see really the breakdown from the last four years it has been incredible. We've um, encountered an, an opportunity um, probably in the last six, seven years, you could really see uh, from 2006 on how it expanded. For a long time, we saw trade export numbers in 15 to 16 billion dollar range, but for the first time now, you're st starting to really see that explosive growth in U.S. exports. Uh, in 2006, we had a little over 19 billion, in 2007, 24, and in 2008, 32. And it's, it's really telling, um, this past year, in 2008, these numbers just came out in February, that for the first time in a long time, U.S. exports have actually exceeded uh, the imports from Brazil. And it's really showing. I, I'd like to give credit for the Department of Commerce, but it's really you guys um, who are sitting here and the companies similar to yours that have just showed uh, your interest in Brazil and have taken that risk to expand into a new market. What are we trading? Our top exports, um, machinery, air and space, craft, electrical machinery, mineral and fuel, are very similar both for the imports and the exports. Um, but it's important to see what, what those are the highlights of. So how easy is it to do business in Brazil? Um, unfortunately, it, it's not the easiest market. It um, ranks 125 out of 181 in the World Bank's Doing Business Report for 2009. And this is, this is quite telling of where Brazil stands. Um, a high ranking or low number means that the regulatory environment is conducive to the operation of business. Um, so Singapore ranks number one, shown here. Uh, New Zealand ranks two and the U.S. ranks three. So unfortunately, Brazil uh, doesn't fare that well in, in the ease of, of doing business. And, and this report, for those who aren't familiar with it, um, it looks at 10 business indicators from how easy it is to pay taxes to how long it takes to close a business. The World Bank does a phenomenal job in this report by, um, they have, a, again, 181 countries that they look at. They do these same 10 indicators for all the countries. 
thought it was also important to talk about the market opportunities and the areas of investment. Um, this is not an exhaustive list. Um, we actually have this uh, same list as in your packet of um, information that UPS has provided you from the commercial service. And uh, it's important to note um, infrastructure projects. I'll, I'll focus on a few of them. We had um, Ricardo Schaefer from Apex earlier speak about the importance of Brazil's um, acceleration growth program, their PAC. And uh, these infrastructure projects have been um, one of the focuses of the Brazilian government. And it's really um, an indicator of how much uh, construction has been booming in the country. And there's many opportunities for US companies to still get involved with this. President Lula just recently announced that they were going to be spending uh, 34 billion reais, um, a little over 15 billion US dollars, on a housing development for lo low income housing. So, again, these are new opportunities that will be, uh, be helpful for US companies to start looking at. Brazil will also need energy infrastructure development and green technology as we move forward. Um, of course, you can't forget agriculture and the importance of that to Brazil. And also important to note, looking forward, are the two events that Brazil will uh, be hosting soon, hopefully. 2014 is a World Cup, which has been confirmed. And uh, in 2016, Brazil has the Olympic bid for Rio de Janeiro. And we should be getting an announcement, if I'm not mistaken, this October of where the 2016 Olympics are going to be. And I, I want to talk about this because I think it's important for, for U.S. companies to start looking at where Brazil is going in the next few years and new opportunities that may exist, you know, dealing with, with an Olympics or even the World Cup, you know, all the security requirements that come into play, the IT that's involved, um, again, a lot of new opportunities out there. <coughs> Now, there are challenges and barriers to doing trade. I'm going to just talk a little bit about it. Our um, next um, uh, participants of the panel will talk more of the legal um, aspect. So I just wanted to give you a general overview. But unfortunately, um, as mentioned, it is, it is challenging to do uh, business in Brazil. Tariffs are high. Custom barriers exist. Um, you know, it's one of the, the most common problems that, that companies come to the Department of Commerce and say, you know, these tariffs are really high, what can you do? And that's the, the challenge for me sitting on the Brazil desk. Um, uh, we've looked at the average tariff has actually decreased, believe it or not. 2003, we had about 12.3% was the average. This year, 11.3. Uh, so it's dropped a little bit, better than, you know, than, than increasing, obviously. But we're continuing to, to fight this one. Um, it's also a lengthy process for standards, testing, and labeling. Um, something to be mindful of is also the lack of intellectual property rights, unfortunately, and the 10-year patent backlog or more um, that exists in Brazil. And we've, we've worked on this um, from the Department of Commerce. Um, our Deputy Assistant Secretary mentioned the commercial dialogue that we have, and I'll get into that a little bit more, but we've tried to work closely with our patent officers from the U.S. with, with working with Brazil to, to help decrease that backlog. Um, and as mentioned earlier, it was a Custo Brazil, and this is a logistical cost and infrastructure bottlenecks that do exist. Um, and lastly, we can't forget, unfortunately, corruption still does exist, and which is something to be mindful of. Um, and of course, abiding by all our U.S. laws um, that I think our attorneys will get into later. <coughs> 